Well, welcome everyone tonight to our meeting. The numbers are smaller, but uh, again, this Christmas season coming up. I don't know about you, but uh, I've got quite a few things piled up in my shop right now that have to be done before Christmas. I'm looking at the date now, number nine, it means that you've got to scurry and do a little bit more work. <laughs> How about yourselves? How are you prepared for Christmas, Agnes? Uh, no, no, haven't started yet. No. <laughs> how about Lloyd? And how about you? I've been. Uh, we've decided we're going to try and make everything this year. So we've been busy making everything amongst the family. So pretty busy. Pretty busy. <laughs> Robert, you've already had part of a Christmas down in Tennessee, I think, right? That's correct. Yeah, we just got back a little while ago, and uh, things are good down there. And I did a little bit of carving and a little bit of pyro down there. So, how was the weather? Yeah, it was pretty good. It was about uh, fifty between fifties and sixties, but they a couple of days you had frost in the evenings. Yeah. So they probably don't have much snow yet, right? Eh? No snow at all. No. Yeah. How about George? What What's happened in your life? Well, I, I've been busy with my outdoor activities, trying to get my, get my ski gear ready and then uh, getting all that good stuff, uh, outdoor outdoor recreational. So um, haven't been doing too much in the pyro or uh, anything like that. Um, I really don't get into wood carving as such. I prefer pyro. And uh, right now our, our club is in a difficult situation. Uh, but, uh, well, with, you know, with everything sort of closed down type of thing we can't get space and but we're just <clears throat> we just have our our pyro uh, in with the uh, the clutch you know uh so uh we're sort of mixed up into one group now so, uh, we'll see what uh Is that i haven't been to the clutches for a very long time i'm i'll go i'll, I'll go, go this friday because it's a potluck and uh See what's what's cooking there, but uh, other than that, it's. Uh, I, I guess Bob was probably been there more than me. So you're that's, in Ottawa too, are you? Ottawa, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Keith, uh, you just finished or just in the midst of a show right now or a sale, eh? Uh, yeah, a couple couple of sales. We had we my wife and I did one on uh, Saturday at a church in Dundas. And uh, that's the first time we've done anything like that since since COVID hit. It was uh, uh, it was an interesting experience, and uh, we got to see how times have changed a bit in the last couple of years. And uh, also the Burlington Art Gallery, uh, which our guild is part of, has uh, uh, their winter sale on from late November till uh, uh, the end of the year. And uh, that's, uh, haven't, had too, have, have, haven't had too many orders, but uh, it's kind of nice to see what, uh, what all the other uh, guild members are, are doing. It's very, very interesting, getting exposed to a lot of art. I looked at the show, uh, the people that are representing the, the show, and it's, it's quite interesting, quite a wide variety of uh, uh, art pieces of art and creations. Yes, there is. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's really inspiring to go into that place and see what the different things people can do. But, um, anyhow, it's... Like I said, we learned a lot at the art uh, at the uh, the church sale on Saturday. Nobody carries cash around anymore. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's everybody wants to do it. You need a debit card reader now to, to you sell. You use a, a debit yeah. card reader. I beg your pardon, Murray. You have a debit card reader? No, no, we don't. Uh, my stuff, my, the stuff I was selling. Is, is I, I went into the square. Uh, it's simply called square. And uh, do you have mm -hmm. any the rest of you use that at all or been involved in it? Yes. And uh, but the one uh, 
I guess everybody else must be doing the same because the one that was recommended to me is uh, is out of stock, and I'm still waiting for notification from uh, from them to say that they've got inventory back in. There's one that uh, I forget what the differences are. The the really inexpensive one is seems to be available, but the one that's a lot more versatile isn't. Do you know the name of it or? No, I don't. Okay. I don't. If, if any of you are interested, the, the, one, the company called Square, what it does is they give you a, a couple of different kinds of readers are possible with that, but the little square unit, just about inch and a half or two inches square. And you can put the card into the slot or it has the tap feature on top, which 99% of the people use that. And it also uh, immediately recognizes whether the card is valid or not. And sometimes at the craft sales, people are giving cards that are not, not good. And so you get stung for it if you accept it. They take the product and then you find out later that the thing simply was empty or it doesn't have the uh, cash behind it. But the, the square unit is uh, what you do then is on a cell phone, you download the app and I touch the app on my cell phone, it brings up the square program and that immediately my cell phone connects through the internet to the square people wherever they are. And then the customer tells me what they want to buy. I tap it in on the telephone, on the, on the keyboard, on the number pad. And uh, when it's ready and I agree to it, they give me the card, they can get over to put it over top of the unit and it gives a beep and it's all done. At the end of the day, immediately they send me emails of what I sold. At the end of the week, they give me information about that week or sometimes the month will give you a whole record of it. And it also, you could do credit cards this way. And so it's really, and I also use it for billing somebody uh, from the US particularly when they can't do e-transfer they want to if they don't have PayPal or not familiar with that I can do a credit card transfer and charge their card uh, with the amount that I'm that, that I'm uh, going to get and so they, it is really very very handy we just had a sale uh, at the end or the first part of December was Christmas at by candlelight at Lang Pioneer Village I've taken part in that now for about 23 years of it. And uh, we had the first night was a blizzard. The second night was also more snow. And, but uh, people, there was only about 200 came, came the first night. And we didn't really have much reaction or much contact with the people as they came through the doors. And I think probably they're worried about leaving early and threatening to get out of there before they got stuck on the road. But the second night was about the same number of people, but the sales went crazy. I sold all kinds of little carvings. And that was really kind of exciting for us because uh, it's nice to have that little lump before Christmas. And so it does, uh, it, the sales are there and it helped. Well, I'm getting an echo from somebody. It was my words, I think. Anyway. That's what's happened for in our lives. And then we just came back from uh, last night, get back from Muskoka's area. And uh, it's at the uh, JW Marriott Hotel Resort and Spa. We went up for the Tuesday afternoon and then came back Wednesday and uh, just to, to meet the people, to see the facility and see what the possibilities were. And uh, we're going to have a uh, two opportunities that are coming up now because of that. One is between Christmas and New Year's and the other one will be in February that they're looking for help on. It's uh, three, the last three weekends of February and it, they have a, a winter loot kind of thing that they're trying to build on which will be a lot of outdoor activities, some indoor displays, etc. So I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen on that but uh, there's two of us that are going to go up at just after Christmas for a couple of days to demonstrate wood carving. So it's kind of the initial start of it. And I know that Keith, you said something about 
being willing to go, but I'm just not sure yet about the burning. Uh, they've got signs up all over the place because it's a completely uh, smoke-free place. And if you're caught smoking in a room or even on a balcony, uh, and also that goes for vaping, which some people are really hooked on that part, uh, they'll charge you three hundred dollars extra. It's a fine for you that they level onto you. So I think that you've got a machine there that with your uh, burning that you have a filter system that maybe there's no smoke at all. That's what I'm thinking of, Keith. I don't know if it's going to work that way, but we'll, see. we'll have to let you all know what's going to happen that part. I've got some pictures I'll show you here later. <clears throat> Maybe we should just try that right now because we're talking about that. I'll try to share a screen here and we'll go to this one here. Okay. Now this is the, the hotel resort. Can you see the picture okay? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. And then I'll just simply click through it. Uh, the part that I know that some of the hotels are backed by some some of the religious groups who are more into one than the other. And I kind of question about the JW Marriott Hotel. Well, the JW stands for J. Willard Marriott, the guy that started it all. So this is a beautiful hotel as you go up closer to the resort and spa. This is the umbrella thing that's out front. And this gorgeous big seat that my wife found to sit on is solid oak. It must have taken probably a forklift to get it in there. But it's uh, one very piece, a beautiful piece of woodwork. That's the foyer. Now this goes into the room that we stayed in. The door is on the left hand side, coming into the uh, room, and the kitchen <clears throat> is completely equipped with everything you can to make your own meals, etc. Plus a dishwasher. The black thing on the top of the counter is a two burner stove. And refrigerator, sink, and all that kind of thing. Uh, this looks into the bathroom, which is to the right of the entrance. And the door that's partly open is the toilet. And uh, the double uh, two sinks on the left hand side, just past the robes, is you can see the bathtub there. And there's a, a great big shower to the left of that on the left side, looking into the bedroom. And it's a beautiful bedroom, uh, all carved out of uh, pine. It's hand carved. And they're uh, on top of there, the uh, little balls or the knobs are uh, acorns, not acorns, they're uh, bah. pine cones. So it's kind of, a, kind of a great spot to stay there. You've got a big TV in the bedroom and you look at the living room, which is just past the kitchens on the left-hand side. It is one gorgeous place. They call it a condo. Everybody gets a condo suite at this place. So they have all kinds of outdoor activities. Uh, welcome me when I walked in the room, fireplace, and the two of us. And there's one thing about the, when we go back to it again, we'll be taking our own food, sitting at that table. And I'll try to get these pictures to show you here. I don't know how they're going to come out, but that plate was my evening meal. It was pureed. Parsnips with kind of a chutney thing of beets, little tiny beets on top of it with green beans, a roasted salmon, and a piece of fish, which is a little bit smaller than a fork. And that was 33 bucks. That was more delicious. My wife had is kind of a mushroom thing and with some rice. And that was also about $35 or so. So the total meal was one of the uh, with with uh, the dessert, one dish we shared a piece of cheesecake, two plates was $99. It's not something that uh, this wood carver can afford. <laughs> but that might be a help to you just to understand what we went through a little bit there. You know, back to our... Okay. So... It looks as if we may go up there to take part in it. They've never done this before. 
but they're hoping, uh, and I put an appeal out for one of the you know, woodcarvers groups that I was in. So if there was anybody in the Muskoka area, like over Perry Sound, Gravenhurst, uh, that area that would like to take part in this, they're looking for people to come. But for most of us, it's quite a long drive. Uh, when you think about St. Catharines and we're here at, uh, it, uh, it would be a little bit of a, a longer drive. We'd probably talk about four hours at least to drive up there. I'm getting the stage that sitting too long in the car now is not something that's terribly comfortable. <laughs> that's part of what we did, but and that's it's an opportunity we've just never had before, but and that's part of it. So, biography, are, are any of you doing any pyro work over this Christmas season? I know Robert and I've got pictures to show tonight. Anybody else? Keith, you've been selling, but it's been working. I, I'm doing another blue nose stamp, and uh, so I'm sort of halfway through. There's not much to show on it right now, mm. but uh, it's it's my third time doing doing that same picture, and I'm really enjoying it. Actually, it's uh, I've I've learned every time every time I do a new one, I'm able to try out other stuff that I've learned before, and uh, uh, it it's. Nice to see my work is progressing a little bit. Uh, uh, different shading techniques and that kind of thing. Yes, absolutely. Agnes, what about you? Have you been working at some of your biography? Uh, I have been dabbling. However, I have never been satisfied with what I have done. So I just ordered new tips. <laughs> so whether that would make a difference or not, I have no idea, but uh, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see. How about Lloyd? I'm sorry. Yeah, I've been making a cribbage board for my granddaughter, and I did a, I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah, just hold it still. A little stump at the bottom. A little oh, stump that's at the bottom. nice. Is that yeah. Pepe Le Pew? Pepe Le Pew, yeah, and uh, flower. <laughs> the little stinker. <laughs> well, that's it. My, minor stuff. Nothing really serious on biography. <laughs> Just some minor stuff. So, George, how about yourself? Have you been burning at all? No, I have not, Murray. I have not done a thing in pyro. I've just been uh, trying to get myself motivated here. I got... I got the uh, the print there of, of the of the ribbons, yeah. and uh, well, you went you muted yourself there. Oh. it's been quite difficult actually trying to get myself organized and uh, motivated to do any kind of pyro. Um, I, I seem to be more inclined to do pyro when I'm with the group. Uh, you know, when, I, when, I, when I'm with all, all the rest of the, py the pyro people, and uh, I guess that's my, my motivation. Uh, so at home, I'm always finding excuses to do something else. <laughs> and uh, so that's my biggest drawback. But hopefully in the new year, I'm going to... Uh, uh, try to make more of an exerted effort that uh, during the nasty days, uh, snowstorms, and uh, it's not very pleasant to do anything outside. That's a good time to do pyro, I guess. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and collect uh, a few uh, few patterns. But I think the biggest thing, you know, Murray, is trying to get the uh, raw material. Yeah. Uh, like like our 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 um, our supplier. Uh, um, Bill, I mean, I, I don't know where, uh, where are you getting your wood at, uh, Bob? Mostly KGP. KGP, that's expensive. Well, sometimes you can get a good deal there. Yeah, eh? Yeah, well, I know I've been there a few times, but uh, I find the prices, uh, I don't know, they're pretty, pretty high. I, I, I don't know where, you want that? The wood source. Wood, wood source. So in 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 Manitek. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering where, where Brian Brian Graham gets his. I wonder if he uh, is able to get a hold of Bill. I don't know. Because Bill was our main supplier, you know, and uh, 
his prices were really good, but I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to find out at the clutch here on Friday to see what's what's uh, how accessible it is to get to get a hold of him. You know, anyway. you're doing uh, these the things that both of you have done things on uh, maple or birch or what kind of wood are you looking for? Basswood. Basswood. And 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 um, butternut and uh, well, Bill has has a selection of other types of wood too, I guess, but. Uh, uh, he, he, he was our main supplier, you know, and, and uh, so now with this pan pandemic, yeah, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, it, it has changed things so much, so much, you know. White pine is good to burn on too. What's that? White pine. White pine, yeah. I'm sorry, not pine, white maple. Maple, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's too bad KPG didn't have... Um, you know, like uh, discounted prices or or uh, sales or something like that. Uh, I've never seen anything that's, that's on sale there. You know, so uh, but they do have a lot of different kinds of wood. Oh my gosh, they got a lot of different uh, species. You know, but they charge an arm and leg for. It. So I've I've been I've been actually doing a little bit on on um, on 140 pound cold press paper. You know. It certainly is a lot cheaper, you know, to put it on paper as opposed to wood. So, so I think that's probably going to be my source starting the new year is putting everything on uh, on uh, on cold press paper. You know, one thing you can do is uh, go to the uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, and they sell the plywood. I think it's probably some of it's a quarter inch, maybe some a little bit less than that, but. It's good one side of the kind of uh, thing I'm looking for is birch on one side or maple. And uh, they're two feet by two feet and they're not that expensive. Mm -hmm. But you mm -hmm. can cut it up into smaller pieces, whatever size of biography piece you're going to do. Right, right. Yeah. So what would you find that in the uh, uh, scrap, scrap bin or is it no, selected? It's a special area back in our store. It's near where the plywoods are and uh, some of the lumbers and that kind of thing. So you can get it. it, it each store is different, but the one that we're in is to the right and it's to the, towards the back of the store. Okay. And, and they'll cut it up for you or what? They have it cut already two foot by two foot. I also buy two feet by four feet. Two feet by four feet. That's pretty, pretty big yeah. chunk, eh? So then you bring it home and you cut it yourself. Yeah, I cut yeah. it myself that way. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. that's that's an, the next problem for me because I'm living in a condo, right? So I mean, uh, it's it, it's uh, it's pretty hard for me to really do, do any kind of work inside the condo. Yeah. You know, and uh, so I would have to have all this prepared for me. You know. Yeah. So the only place I, that we have here in Ottawa is Rona, and. Uh, They'll they'll do custom cuts there. Deepa will just do uh, specific cut. You know, um, I guess the the wood source maybe in Manitic they might they would probably do they would probably cut it up in uh, in whatever size you need it. But uh, yeah, I guess these are all the things that I'm going to have to examine. Uh, Home Depot will cut also. They're they're very easy to work with. Okay. Mm -hmm. And okay. you may pay a dollar a cut after the first cut's free, I think, and then after that you pay more. But right, uh, right. come out of with some pretty nice pieces. They got a really good saw. Usually, no frays at the edge or anything. Okay. Okay. So Keith, you've used some of the plywood, haven't you? Yes. Yes, I have, and uh, uh, I I've uh, had got it from Lowe's or Home Depot, and like you say, they they charge. It's uh, here. It seems to be fifty cents a cut, so it it doesn't add a lot to the cost of uh, uh, of, of the piece. The other thing I'd say about the plywood is that uh, most of the, most of the sheets I've seen have had some sort of a, uh, a finish put onto it, probably to try to make it smooth. But you need to sand it lightly before you start to burn. Yeah, but you can see that it's like it's almost like a soap wash that was on it dried on the surface of it and when you burn it that does change color right next to the burn it's almost like it's uh i don't know how to describe it but it's it would be kind of an orangey color beside the black burn 
It's mainly because that finish is on the surface of the ball width. Well, what I'm going to do quickly is just do, we just have two of us that sent our uh, things in, but we'll give this a try and it's, it's and we'll go to. Okay. <clears throat> Well, the first the picture just set it up. So the biography for December and came up with here, the uh, first one's Robert Thompson. There's two of us actually, so it's first and second. And Robert, uh, you can explain what you see here. Just a piece I found uh, with, the, with the winter scene, snow banners and trees and uh, it a little bit of shading in it and it was, Quite interesting to do, and uh, it was a good mantelpiece. And somebody uh, claimed that before you got out of Tennessee, right? Yeah, it's my daughter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she gaffled, she gaffled everything I did there. Any questions about this piece? Well, go to your next one, Robert. You've got color added here. Yes, that was a little more interesting to do. Uh, it turned out pretty good, I think. Uh, I enjoyed doing it. It's a winter scene. Mm. Yeah. From the top of looking at the clouds, you did a great job of blending the white and the gray and the blue and whatever is in the coloring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you use for coloring, Rob? Just the water watercolors. Yeah. Okay. Is that painted or watercolor pencils? No, it, it, uh, it's a uh, watercolor acrylic uh, a paint. And uh, some of it I didn't paint. It's just a uh, brown, it's just a wood burning. Okay. I just painted the white and the, the green. The rest is okay, the next one comes up is something from me. And I gave the ribbon a try. And that was my first work that I did on basswood. And that was really quite a new experience for me because it's very low heat. And I normally would burn something on some of the hard, the plywood's probably would burn at about a six or seven sometimes. This is at about a three to four, but it took a lot longer to do. Keith probably recognized that. It takes much more time. So I just went a little bit closer on the next picture. You can see some of the uh, burning that's on that. And rather than outline it with a, with a dark line, I did it strictly by a one kind of a spoon um, tip on the end of my razor tip uh, handle. And that spoon thing, I was able to do kind of a circle on there and on the end of the ribbons at the top left and right, you can see where I did lines to kind of give it the round look to it. But mm. the piece of basswood, of course, has surprises in it. And that on the right hand side, you'll see that uh, blemish that was in the wood goes up in the ribbon. Go a little bit further here. You'll see it closer to it. And the surface was interesting to work on. Mm. So I, I offered you those uh, these looks. There's the ribbon up closer, and you can see with the shine on it, it really gives some interesting challenges for the uh, dark and light parts of it following closely to try to get the, the so the ribbon looked as if it rounded or it pinched when it goes in. And I think this is actually one of the things that this is, is a graphic, not a photograph of a ribbon, which then tends to deteriorate the picture some. If you had a real ribbon, it might be different than that. This next ribbon that I said along was 
could be an actual photograph from the detail I look as you look inside of it and the sharpness of the edges, etc. That might take quite a while to give it a try, but a thought in choosing these pictures, when Keith and I talked about shading, uh, this is a great thing to try to practice your shading on. It gives you a tremendous opportunity to make things round rather than just flat. And then you've got inside of the ribbons, if you look at that fold about the middle of the picture to the left, there's one with quite a dark center compared to the other centers of the ribbon that's rolled. So that definitely be a challenge there. And this next one here is, I thought was a great picture to try it. The, the shadow on the, of the dice or the die is, is the left of it and underneath. And then you've got the different colors of the shading of white on the side with the two dots compared to the three and compared to the one. There's actually three different tones there that would be interesting to try to give you that depth of the uh, look when you finish the picture. This one, this next one again, number six, does the same thing. Uh, compare this again to the number uh, of the, the only dice here, this one, two, and three. Uh, the black spots have a little bit of uh, a shine to it on one side, indicating this depth or it's rounded out. Where you go on this one, you can see quite a bit of that. So if on the number five, for instance, if you were to do that, uh, the, the round uh, areas, the white, the shining, shimmering color coming from the reflection from the light does give it a tremendous depth look to those little circles. So again, it's got shadow underneath the dice and to the left of it a bit to make it look like a standing out. So it was a possibility. And then this other one here, just threw it in for the thought. I don't know if I'll do this or not, but I might give it a try, but it's, a, it's an odd piece. It's got the challenge of doing the it's a stack of plywood pieces cut, apparently. And you could probably do the different colors, the lines, that look of the, the depth of it and the perspective too to the thing. So those are ones that I suggested. Any comments or questions about these? I like that bowl, but it's a second bowl. It, it would be a real challenge. This golden, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's lots of challenges there, Murray. Lots of really good challenges. When you, when you look at this, Keith, if you give a suggestion on how you'd move from the, the light shimmering areas to the dark beside it, how would you do that with your burner? Um, the method that's been suggested to me is do the dark parts first. Okay. And, uh, uh, and then sort of move from the darks to the lights. The, the other thing is that when you go to burn that, you can uh, take some artistic license and you can burn the dark parts darker than what, what they're showing there to give, give, give more differentiation between the dark and darks and the lights. But uh, the, the best thing to do is to, to get a, a really good range between light and, and dark. So and, you, you do it as a buildup too, really starting up. Yes, light, light that's right. Yes. On each of the dark yeah. parts. Yes. And as because you build it up towards the edge. A lot easier to build easier right. to build up than it is to build down. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now, just if you look at the center of it, I don't know my mouse to show this part here. Yep. Yeah, those, if I would start here, just real light and build it, uh, light almost up to there, and yep. then come back and do another burning a little bit darker here over the whole thing. That's right. And then when you get finally the, the last part of burning, which is turning the heat up a bit or going slower, do it right close to the edge. Mm -hmm. but remembering here that this ribbon is, is beside these two and the shading and the darkness is darker yet. So you don't go too dark here, but you go darker here. Yes. 
and the edge of it here between this roll of the ribbon is interesting because you'll see uh, the small the smaller piece behind it and it's simply done by uh, with the white you can almost not see the edge but your eye tends to pick up the burning or the darkness where the change of color is this color here makes this color stand out it's part yes. of this one. so it's trying to think it through before i start it that's what i'm trying to do any other questions about that folks so the the uh, the the white part there, you you would just leave that the way it is to give it that white uh, shiny look, eh? Yes. You know, what, you know what I mean? There, it's it's uh, like it's where yeah, where you have that sh shiny ribbon look. Is here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that look. That would be be an area where you where you wouldn't even. You wouldn't even touch. It's the same color as the background, actually. That's right. But again, you could put a little bit into it because the white back here is not the same as the white here. It'd be very, very, very light. Just the lightest possible level your your burner would be able to go. And George, I think you'd probably get a better result with this, with that, with the paper than you would with wood. That's right. That's right. You would, you yeah. Gleaming white here compared to the wood's color, like uh, using a piece of plywood birch would be almost a tone of something else background. See? That's right. And then you'd have to be really uh, quite densely burned then. Agnes, yeah, I'd help you. That's it. That's a complicated piece. Yeah. Agnes, Agnes so give us some questions there. Well, uh, that is too complicated for me. <laughs> How about trying the red ribbon? Um, I'll I'll go and get what I have done, and. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll be back. Okay, I'll, Continue. Get one, I'll get one to show you too. So, like when you when you uh, when you uh, draw that type of thing, um, you would just draw the lines of the ribbon. Uh, um, very lightly, I guess. Eh? Uh, you, would, you wouldn't have to really trace too much of that, would you? Mm, no. Uh, and if uh, probably once you, once you do the lines on, you'd want to go get a, uh, a, a, a do, give it a light sanding to get rid of, knock down the, uh, the tracing lines. Right, right. Okay, I'm going to stop the share here. I don't think there's another one. Just a minute, we'll take a look here. I think that's the last couple here. Yeah, that's our last one of this particular slideshow. So, Agnes, you've got something to tell us. So, I have been working a little, not as much. See, a, uh, that's my picture. It's actually a painting. And uh, I am still not finished. Yeah, hold it still now. So that's your burning, is it? That's my burning. Well, it's coming along. It really looks good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It's, it's nice. Show, show it. Can you hold the two side by side? Yeah. 
Now tell us about it. So when you do, then you come up on the screen. Talk. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I find that uh, my, the darkness, I have problems. Sometimes the, the tip is too dark or not dark enough. Anyhow, that none of them is, but they kind of is blotchy and I can't seem to have good control of my tip and I am blaming my tip. <laughs> so I ordered a different kind of tip to see whether uh, that will help me when I am shading. Okay, if you hold it still for a minute, if you look at this part where I, I most and put the mouse on it, you, I can see what you mean by blotching the, the little darker spots compared to the lighter. But my suggestion would be that if you did your shaders there and start by shading that in lightly, making sure that that light shading all the way through it is covering it in different spots. So if you say you just covered this part here and then a little bit of this and then go back and go slower with the same shader equally over the same area and you'll see that the blotching will disappear. Sometimes the blotching for me comes because one part of the wood is softer than another. And so it burns quicker. And I can't always tell because it's a flat piece of wood. And if the wood has any grain in it, like uh, sometimes like oak has or uh, even maple or, or birch has that kind of grain difference. Each grain uh, surface, each pattern of the grain is actually consisting of different kinds of wood in there, different densities. Actually, what I have done with this already, I realize that uh, after I've done part of it, I was I, my shader is not gliding. It seems like I am uh, the wood is not uh, smooth enough. Uh -huh. So I. So I actually wash it and re-sanded it and then re uh, uh, line, uh, well, started shading again. Uh, and it seems a little smoother, but it's still not, I'm still having, it's still not good enough. Yeah. Uh, I am so I'm hoping that I will get a better sh shader and a little wider at certain parts so I can uh, I, I can be a more even yeah if you, uh, if you burn a little bit uh, taking the uh, smaller areas and just shade it and then keep shading it until it gets the darkness you want. One example, I think that uh, on that, uh, Keith had recommended that gal's name, what was her again, Keith? That, Julie Bender? No, not Judy, the other one. The, do we, the video, the girl, she just gives her first name. We sent the link to everybody. And we, which, which she built a kind of a, a sheet that shows the levels of shading. I, I watched that, yeah. A little darker, a little, yes. darker, a little darker. And then you can yes. set up against it, whatever you're doing. If you build one of those, like you don't have to strip a wood to make one of those yourself. And then put that strip up against your piece that you're doing and try to duplicate that shading that you did previously. But that's where the practice helps you. Uh, I uh, I tried that, but even my even that piece that I am doing, I, I I'm I I'm not. It's not as it's not the same thing that 
uh, I think her name is Julie. Uh, okay. Even her practice piece is so much better than what I can do with my practice piece. So uh -huh. I, I really need to work, uh, do a lot more work. Well, I think you can go back to what Keith said a few minutes ago when he's doing his third step. He's done this twice before, and each time you learn something new from it, Keith. That's right. So what would you suggest with Agnes when she's having this difficulty? Well, it, I think to me, uh, it's been a lot of years of plus frustration with uh, uh, having my shading turn out blotchy. And uh, one thing I'm doing now is before I put my, my pen down onto the wood is take a scrap piece of wood and just touch the, the tip of the pen to the wood and it bleeds off, uh, so bleeds off some of the heat and uh, and then then go right away over to the piece that you want to burn. And because uh, if you're just holding your pen up in the air, it gets hotter than it does when it's on the wood. And when you put it down on the wood, you you end up with a, a big uh, big blotch. So the uh, the uh, one thing to, to avoid that is to burn that heat off on a scrap piece of wood. The other thing is when when you either that or if you have a very dark spot on, on the piece that you're burning, uh, then touch the pen onto that dark spot and that'll take away some of that initial heat. And then you can go right over to the area that you, you really want to burn. Uh, the other thing that I'm I'm still trying to learn after five or six years is, is when I put my pen down onto the wood uh, when I'm actually burning is, is to, uh, I won't say gradual, but it's like, they call it landing an airplane where you move, move your pen uh, reasonably quickly across the area you want to burn. And that, that kind of burns the heat, takes the heat off, and it spreads it out so that it's not in one spot. So I think the other way you could describe it is like sweeping the floor. Yes. If you take a broom from left to right and swing it in an arch, right above the dirt is That's where it's right. going to move most. Yes. It's going to be where it touches. So that yes. motion, like never ever have your burner, your blade, your tip just apply it to one spot and pull it back because you'll get a yep. block for sure. Yeah. But this, uh, but uh, that uh, when you're burning at a temperature, I don't know, maybe at a half to five eighths or something, if whatever the dial is, you're pretty hot. And so if you wait, the time in between the touches will make the blade hotter if you wait too long. Mm -hmm. Like turning it on, picking up the pen, getting it the right in your hand, and then look at your pattern. By that time, you can look up and you see the tip is almost red. So the only way to control that is to have the second piece of wood that Keith's talking about. And also in some ways, it, it also that wood will help you to get rid of any kind of carbon buildup that's on that tip. Mm -hmm. That's another way to knock it off because that carbon buildup, if that's happening, because you burn too hot, you're going to end up reducing the heat transfer from the tip to the wood. It's like having a glove on. You gotta get rid of that. Now, one thing that we've been talking a lot about in our sessions, because there are people like Keith causes this kind of problem because he's so good at shading. And uh, having worked with Julie Bender, he ends up uh, making his pictures look almost, you know, almost more real than real is. Especially the good bobcat. When I started burning, I was not shading. I was drawing lines with it. And I want to show you one of my old pieces. It's kind of a fun thing. And this, uh, for George, I know this might get you started if you had something like this, but 
My mother had this rolling pin that she used for large slabs of clay. It's actually a rolling pin from a baker. And you can see how big it is. Oh, wow. If I come back a little further here, you can see it. Back. That's a big pin. That's a big rolling pin. <laughs> see, well, what I'm doing on this particular piece, I'm going to come a little closer and uh, hold it still if I can, where, where it doesn't disappear. I mean, it's going to disappear because this, this is oh, just a minute. I'll make some changes on my screen here. It'll help a little bit more if I go to virtual backgrounds and I'll say none. In the virtual background, then I'm holding this up for you to see. Control it this way. What I've got is an old village that I put on here. Is that, is that clear enough for you to see? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Nice. yeah. yeah. Wow, that's pretty, pretty neat. And so it, it's been so much fun to do this because there is a little bit of shading in the trees and to get my contrast of colors, that kind of thing. But it's just imagination. Right. The entire rolling pin, this is about 30, 36 inches long, roughly. Mm -hmm. and so, so did you have a pattern to go by or was that just like from your it's, head? It's just by hand, just by imagination. Imagination, isn't that amazing how you manage to put, put, put that together? Well, it, it, I don't know if you can see on this one here. Uh, I can't remember what uh, which one I did this on, but. Hmm. Oh, here on this side here, this part of the rolling pin. Yeah. And what I did there, if you can see the top of it, imagination wise, they've got hmm. a clothesline strung up with clothes on it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's definitely imagination. So you can't make a mistake. There's a guy with a kite, I think, there too, isn't there? And some of them yeah, are I... more detailed. Mm -hmm. uh, this hangs in our kitchen. It's a decorative piece, and it gets lots of comments. But you can take an ordinary rolling pin. The one thing is to wash it off, because especially when you buy it from an antique dealer, it's somebody's used this a lot with oils in it. And they've done it for baking that may have put flour together with the butter and that type of thing and rolled it out to make shortbread, for instance. And you'll end up with that in the wood. But this piece was only used for clay. And so it didn't have any of that that uh, that oil in it. But I have burned some that were had had been used uh, for baking with, you know, the products on it. You can feel it actually when you pick it up. And uh, it will burn really weird. And it also has a smell of something burning in the oven. <laughs> that gives you an idea. So what I'm speaking to here is the line art. It's not just shading. You could probably shade some of that, but it's not going to be as effective as the line art is with all the different patterns and things that are on that picture. So that gives you an idea of what's there. So did you did you draw draw that on there first with it with a pencil or yeah you use a pencil to draw it on but <laughs> to again, draw it on, you yeah. start it doesn't really matter if you make a mistake you just change the design right right all you got to remember about art is one mistake covering another mistake with enough nerve to charge for it <laughs> <laughs> and 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 how did you keep the uh, the rolling pin like stationary did you uh, have a cradle for it or something or what. No, you, you just roll a towel up and put a little piece of cloth or something. So it doesn't okay. roll okay. So I did have to, I did put a baseline so it wouldn't end up with a spiral. It looked like it was going uphill. Yeah, um, yeah. But the rolling pin has been a great thing to burn on. Yeah, yeah. No, that's the, that's like oak. Is it that oak or is that? This is a maple, I think. Maple, that's, that's a pretty hard wood, yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece of very little grain in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, where, where did you get that at, uh, Murray? This, my mom got it. Uh, oh, your, mom, your mom had it. She was oh, a potter. I did pottery oh, okay. with her, but right. doing slab right. pottery, you have to roll the clay even. So they put a spacer, like a piece of wood on each side of the piece of clay, roll this down on top of the uh, two pieces of wood, and you get exactly a three eighths inch thick piece of uh, clay for pottery. That's one of the things when you're doing slab pots and that you want the clay to be even all the way across. So uh, I could put picture, I could take pictures of this and send it to you. It's probably the easiest way. 
then you can use some of these ideas as patterns for your uh, own use. And so they're definitely a fun thing. A plaque, you can make this up. And I actually, when I did this piece, uh, people were having me do a line art by drawing it by hand with a pen, with a black tip markers and that. And then they would uh, do a, a, a pattern off of that, burn it onto a piece of rubber. And the rubber stencil was made from, for those, uh, for, to making the cards and that type of thing. So my patterns, then my houses and things that I drew were made this way into rubber stamps. And they did stamp, stamp arts for cards and whatever. So there's just no end of what you can do with it. I'll, I'll take photos of this and send it to you guys so you can see the what the houses are like. It's probably better than this kind of thing that I'm doing right now. Although I hope you can see it with that. Is it clear enough mm -hmm. it's still? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad, actually. Mm -hmm. The danger of this, the camera doesn't pick it up if you move too much this way and that to do the focus of it. So that's kind of the line art. So it's not putting Keith down with his all of his fancy shading, but when you go into something like uh, doing gourds and art, your artwork on gourds, you'll use not only the line art, but you'll also use sometimes the carving and taking the surface down to use in the background the textures, because the surface of the gourd really is. Have any of you done gourd uh, burning at all? No, I haven't. No. Okay, maybe that's one thing, one session I could probably show you some designs on that and how you can do it because uh, when they have the market come up for the flowers or uh, garden markets, that kind of thing, where they're showing the flowers off and they, uh, they have a big show here in Peterborough, one of the big hockey rinks is filled with all these people selling stuff for the market, for, their, for to people to buy to make their gardens, the flower gardens and whatever up. And uh, there's a lady there, she does gourds, just grows them for people to buy and to work with. And so the surface of the gourd, once it's all washed off, is shiny and hard. But that's only about a sixteenth of an inch or less. And once you go through that, there's white pulp inside. It probably would be three-eighths of an inch to not quite a half. Some areas might be a half inch thick. But you've got quite a bit you can actually carve into it then. And so putting the, the biography on top, the only thing I recommend on that is that you do it in a place where you're not going to do it in the house because it smells like something you left in the frying pan too long. It's burnt vegetables and it does really stink. And not probably good to breathe it either for that matter, but I put a fan blowing away from my product that I'm burning and that sucks cool air in over my hand, put the fan on really low, and it'll take the fumes away from you. I do this in my shop. I've got lots of, I've got a 10 foot ceiling. The previous owner of this uh, house, and he built the shop. He was a hot rod um, stock car racer, and he built his cars in that garage with a 10 foot ceiling. He got an I beam across the top for pulling motors from cars and transmissions or whatever. So it's an ideal place to do burning inside but you can get really stinky if you're not careful. I think some of you might really enjoy uh, pre preparation, doing gourd work. I've had quite a few of them I've done already. Do those gourds not go rotten? No, if, they, if, they, if, they, if the person that you're buying it from knows what they're doing, uh, one lady I said, she had some really nice gourds and she had some that were not yet dry. She says, all, all you do is put it in the house behind the TV. That was the old TV, the big uh, kind of a your television this way. And then it's that deep behind. And the heat behind the television for all winter long tried the gourd perfectly. I tried it. And all it did was grow green fungus and orange fungus and everything. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it was not nice. It was, I, I didn't even want to touch it. It looked like it was so alive. <laughs> But there are people that do the gourds that dry them. And uh, again, what you might get on it is blotchy looks to it because you'll have dark and light uh, areas of the gourd color. So yeah, I'll could, let me do that next time we have a uh, session. 
Couldn't you use a, 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 a hair dryer, a handheld hair dryer to, to dry it? Uh, I mean, like, I don't know nothing about gourds, but I mean. No, they, uh, they do it as they do it very slow in a place where this the humidity is very low. And the, the dry, it's drying. When you shake the gourd, you can hear the seeds inside. And when I've cut some of them open, they're absolutely bone dry inside. And you can get the seed, you can take the seeds out and actually plant it if you want to make gourds. And they're all different shapes and sizes, real so spectacular pieces. But now, can you buy a gourd that's all dried out and all yeah, that's ready to go? That's what I'm saying. At these garden shows, you can buy gourds there. Some of the people will be dealing with that. And actually, if you just put that as a Google request, or if uh, I don't know if you've ever used on Facebook, if you're on Facebook, they have something connected to Facebook called Marketplace. And you click on the Marketplace and ask the question, and who there's everybody selling everything from soup to nuts on there. It'll tell you how far away they are from your house or your place and what city it's in. And you simply contact the people and you can get, and if you did a Google search for dry gourds, definitely you'll get an answer. But it is, it's quite a piece of art when you fit, finish it. I did ones with the roosters on the outside of it and chickens on one side. And then you simply uh, cut out sections of the wings to make them look white or dark or whatever. But it's quite fascinating. But it is a totally different kind of uh, biography work. For guys like Keith, I don't think you'll ever venture into that. Right? Probably not. <laughs> and yet I keep looking at your pictures to see what you've done on the background up above you. <laughs> I want to show you one more piece of line art. So, uh, Keith, have you ever uh, burnt on leather? I have done once. I bought a, uh, uh, an address book for my wife, and then I went to uh, Candy Leather and got a, a cover. And so I, uh, I, I put my wife's name on it. And it, it was quite interesting. It's... Uh, uh it, it's different from from wood but not that different and uh there are are people that that's pretty much all they do there's a lady in in uh in the u.s out of the carolinas michelle parsons is her name and she's actually put a book out on on doing leather and when you look at it it's it's uh, uh it, it's not that that different from from doing wood the heat that you need is different and you have to get used to that and one rule is that you use uh untanned leather with vegetable dyes you don't some some a lot of leather is tanned with uh, chemicals and you you don't use that because it it it's uh it's not very fun to burn with. No, it's 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 vegetable dyed uh, leather. It's uh, specifically. Uh, I know here in Ottawa we have a leather shop. Uh, oh yes. Um, I I I forget the name, but uh, Z, uh, starts with a Z. Uh, um, I don't know, but he he has a leather shop with all kinds of different types of leather, including oh, yes. the veg, vegetable dyed. Yes. But it's, it's it's not cheap, mind you. I mean, you know, you're. You're paying a good penny for it. Yes, 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 yeah. yeah. But it it, yeah. it burns, uh, and you like you're saying, it, it takes very little heat. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it burns very very nicely, but you really have to uh, be extraordinarily care careful. Very yes. careful. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Now, was it you who said you were burning on watercolor paper? Yes. 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 How how are you finding that? Uh, that uh, burning of paper, it's um, once again, it's different than burning on wood, wood, of course. Um, it, it, um, uh, you have to use a higher heat. Oh, yes. Okay. A, a higher heat on paper. Um, like if you're using, like, we'll say a, a five on wood, you'd probably have to use maybe a six and a half on paper. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. so I mean, the, the scale that we talked about earlier in the show. Uh, that wouldn't be applicable because, uh, I mean, you know, you, 
you know, you should use a, a piece of scrap cold press paper and, and check it out, but yes, it wouldn't be the same setting, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, you know, yes. so, so, yes. uh, yeah, so that's about it. Okay, and you use cold press rather than hot press? Uh, cold, cold press, 140 pound, yeah, cold press, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I'm kind of think I'm thinking about trying, uh. Something. Yeah, it's 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 a heck of a lot cheaper cheaper than wood for sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, here's the example of uh, this is a, a plate that I bought from. Uh, you can see somebody's turned it on a lathe. It was uh, I bought it from uh, chipping away in Peterborough in uh, Kitchener, and I think probably it is basswood or maybe willow. It's just hard to tell exactly what it is, but what I did was to draw the design on it, and then I did the burning. Oh, well, that's really nice, Murray. Look at it in the right spot here. You can see it here. And so oh. you're, it's quite intricate burn, quite intricate designs. And it's also has the backgrounds are burned black, but with time, this is done in 2005, and it's starting to fade now. At least the dark seems to be disappearing. It's actually because the plate itself, the wood is now uh, changing. Uh, its patina effect is starting to take there, so it's darkening. It's a lighter piece that I have, so to get the shine away, so you can see it better. Does that help to get closer? Yeah, and that that particular pattern is in one of the Pyro magazines. Is it? I, I yes, just it did it from thoughts or, or there is a pattern quite similar to that well the old days a lot of the greek plates and stuff had designs like this on it oh yes so this is actually the way it's showing you now the bottom of it here is the bottom area of the plate and design the top hangs from up here on the top of this part so the left and right are kind of not quite mirror effect. I was going to do that, but it didn't work that way. But inside is like a flower garden. Mm. Can you see that close there? Yes. Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. Never focuses well enough on that, but and it's just imagination for flowers. It's nothing of any one particular kind. But again, it's a little bit like fine art. It's using pyography in a different way. So. You know, if you're you're kind of stuck in an area right now and you can't get going, why not try something different? I see up behind you, Keith. There's a couple of plates on the wall mm -hmm. in your head mm -hmm. that you have done some burning on, like that. Is that plate or papers or what are they? That's that's plates. Uh, yes, I'm. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're just looking at the patterns on top top of the plate. So I've started them and I haven't uh, progressed all that far, but that's one of my favorite things to do is, is plates. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, I've got a question. I'm, uh, I've seen some nice paddle, mini paddles with birdings on them. And I was wondering if anybody knew of a source of getting the uh, blank mini paddles. If, To buy the paddle, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I just want an unfinished paddle that I can finish. Uh, yeah, I, I, I had a, a mini paddle that was given to me uh, many, many years ago, but I'm not too sure where where he got it. It was, it's exactly what you were asking for. It's only uh -huh. about about two feet long. Yeah, yeah. But it, but it's like a, it's in the shape of a of a canoe canoe paddle you know and it's yes, uh, yes. I, I, I next time i see him i'll have to ask him where he where, where he got it at hmm. yeah okay you'll get uh, if you do paddles you'll get orders to do paddles and did you, you remember that one that we showed in the magazine a few week a few months ago now it had the paddle it had the water droplet on it the, the fellow i think he was from was he Thunder Bay or somewhere? I believe and so. His his paddle was just <clears throat> striking. Yes. And I think mm. did he do some inlay on that too? Yeah. 
I don't know. It was a, it was a beautiful piece anyway. Well, I hope that's been a help to you tonight. Stir some mm -hmm. up and our goal yeah. tonight is get George going. Yeah. <laughs> get Agnes on the right path. <laughs> yes. <laughs> next year. <laughs> next year, Marie. Next year. Next year. <laughs> I've got I've got so many jobs to do tonight, but we're going to finish this up now in a few minutes. And I've got probably four hours of carving to do tonight. <laughs> oh I average about four hours a night carving in the shop. Oh, macro. Jeez, you're dedicated. <laughs> <laughs> got the cable vision out there and some good TV programs on and uh, a nice gas furnace hanging from the ceiling. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a place of my wife and I have a good marriage. She spent time in the house alone. I'm in the shop alone, outside. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you probably have quite an impressive shop, Murray. Oh, they talked about it in the, the character drivers. Uh, one suggestion was that somebody would take their cameras and uh, do a walk around in their shop. Yeah. And I said, that's one thing I will not show anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, a, I have a warning before I bring anybody in. If you have a problem with OCD, don't even come in here. <laughs> I've had some people actually not, I didn't tell it was when I started telling that it was after they said that one couple said, and she wrote back to me, she said, my husband been has husband hasn't been able to sleep since he walked in your shop. And they said, "What's happening?" He says he wants to organize it. They clean it up. <laughs> I, we used to have it in business world. It had a sign that I had on my desk is is the the sign of a the a, a clean desk is the sign of a sick mind. Yes, creative things are all over the place. Yes, Keith is really brave. Look at all the stuff he's got going behind him. My goodness! That's, yeah, if only he'd get going and finish and finish some of it. <laughs> well, you got a cataract coming pretty soon. Surgery? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ten days. Eight. Eight twenty eighth. So. Oh, well, that's yeah. great. Yes. So watch yeah. out. Biographers will have no chance when Keith can see again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think what it'd be like if he could see. <laughs> well, it's been good getting together. Even this fall number is great to be together again. Okay. Yeah, it sure is. It sure is. Yeah. Murray, could you stay on the line for five minutes with me? Sure. Yeah. Good. Okay. Everybody, we're shutting down the video. Oh.